So, what's the difference between <laughs> approach one and approach two? Passion. Passion. And it's really, really, really determining why are you here. And I like it the way he puts it. And why do you get out of bed? And why should anyone care? And Apple and Steve Jobs, he got that part right. I'm not so sure, Jim, uh, if Tim Cook really nails it for the future that way, but we'll see. But you're in, uh, I know the company is in, in good hands with you. So. Um, so, if we're looking at our why, uh, our why is to create raving fans. Of course, for our customers, but of course, we love our customers to be our fans as well. And we have a vision that we see experience, customer, patient, passenger experience as the main driver of loyalty. Uh, so it doesn't matter what business you're in, at the end of the day, there are stakeholders who determine if you're relevant or not. We had a, I'm not mentioning the name, but we had a Dutch consumer bank uh, lately in our office, in our experience room, and I asked them, what sets you apart, hey April, what sets you apart from the competition? And the answer was as follows. So, okay, that's a good start. So, <laughs> now, suppose that you reverse that question. What would, would we be missing if your bank would no longer be with us? And the answer was exactly the same. So it took us a day to really get to relevance. Why you're not taping this, are you, Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> it's a customer, so we cannot put that on tape. Um, but we, we really spent a day to search for the, the real why. And I think it's crucial. So if, if you agree with us that experience is a, if not the main loyalty driver, uh, then it's also important to realize that experience is always personal. You have people who say, well, we can create experiences for others, but you can't. People undergo a certain experience, but we can shape or help shape, uh, let's say, the environment around them. So it, we can influence the experience that people have. That really makes us experience engineers. Yes, we do training, we do coaching, we do consulting, we have psychologists, and we, we do lots of stuff. But if you add up all the lots of stuff, what it comes down to is that we help, basically, uh, to engineer experiences by reverse thinking and engineering, like Bart already explained. So, if we look at ourselves as experienced engineers, we also define how do we want to be experienced and valued. And that's just triggering, empowering, uh, passionate. I mean, if you if you come and talk to people with us, if they're not passionate, please let me know that we, <clears throat> we, uh, we have a situation. But I don't think, Barbara, do we know anybody who's not passionate with us now? They, they, they don't survive. And it's not something that you can actually ask them to be. Either you are or you're not uh, about what you do. So we hire people more for who they are than for what they do. An authentic and resourceful expert is part of our value set as well as the desired experience. So how do we do what we do? Uh, how do we basically get to uh, our experience engineering? Is by transforming business into memorable experience. Managers or even leaders into guiding stewards. It's not the same. And co-workers into ambassadors, and Jim, another one especially for you. Customers into raving fans. Scott, your time is coming, no worries. Um, and also training into impactful learning. And I think this is important. Harris from Epical will do a little demonstration later. Just one of the examples, how you can actually make learning fun. So basically turning the impossible into the possible. Our mission for the value is simple. <coughs> We have been told, and I'm not sure if that's true, Valerie, we haven't met yet, but I'd love to meet you later. But there are a lot of companies that are male-dominant and left-brain managed. Is that correct, or is it wrong informed? No, I don't know. There are exceptions. There's also uh, Marissa Mayer, CEO of Yahoo, uh, and, and I think HP is run by a, a female CEO, but most companies are male-dominated left-brain, which is good, because that means there's a lot of work to do. And I, met, <laughs> and I met Dr. Tracy Weiland from Stanford who said uh, basically uh, that female leadership is, is really is, is coming up, it's, it's surging in, in California. Where I said, well, is female leadership only for female? Because I don't think so. Uh, but that's easy if you come from one of the most feminine cultures in the world, being Holland. Uh, but I think then again, still, I'd, I'd love to help uh, with the team to develop female leadership no matter what the sex is, if you know what I mean. The gender, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Take care. No, I know. 
Um, yeah, a slip of the tongue, I guess. So, where are we? Uh, we're, we're on various spots in the world. So let's call it uh, the, the main hubs, Amsterdam, London. Yes, we are in Minneapolis, but we think we'll have more fun in San Francisco. Working for a number of brands that you might know, which is not too relevant. The most important is that we, we choose really to work for companies that believe in experience, <coughs> the power of experience, and they're willing to invest time, money, resources, but especially energy and passion. We have been working for too many companies that simply don't get it. And that's, I mean, that, that's a waste of time for both parties. So, back to you. Uh, we talked about why, and uh, I'm not sure Tony, oh, no, sorry, James, who was going to represent Tony, you know Zappos? Zappos.com? Yeah. Pretty successful retailer, just yeah. bought by Amazon, I believe. Yeah. So Tony G, the, the CEO of Zappos, turned basically a shoe retailer originally into a multi-billion dollar company, not by selling shoes. Uh, he said, our why is to deliver happiness, which I think is freaking smart. Uh, and it's copied all over the world now. And basically, um, if you are able to define your why in such a sharp, defining, differentiating way, it really could be party time. So my question to you is if you want to take five minutes to, in three sums or four sums, uh, take one minute for yourself and then share what is your why. If you don't have a company but a team, or if it's a product or a service, uh, I spoke to somebody who just started a new business, what is the why of the new business? What is the why of you as a leader or you as a brand? And share that with the three or four colleagues around you. We have five minutes.